Hi, I'm Ryan from Ooze Nest. Welcome to our YouTube channel. On today's tutorial, we're going to be doing a video on two-sided machining. We're going to repurpose this piece of sycamore wood, surface it and get it ready for the project. Now that we've run our surfacing tool path, we can begin to focus on the jig for the double-sided machining. What we're going to do is drill two pocket holes into the material. These are going to be referenced by these aluminium spacers. We're then going to flip over the material and drill exactly the same holes into the spoiler board, which is going to reference the mirrored position of the workpiece when we turn it over. With our pocket tool path complete, we can begin to look at how our jig works. What we're going to do is use these aluminium spacers as references using the holes in our spoiler board. If I just flip this over, using the direction that I've marked out on my software, the same goes for the material. We're going to flip it in this direction, using the holes on our spoiler board in the second slot holes which have been mirrored in the program to place the material down like that reference them holes in there so we know it's exactly the same position as it was on the other side. Now we can get ready to run our roughing tool path. With our first roughing pass complete, I'm going to flip over the workpiece so we can begin doing the same on the bottom side using our aluminium spacers as reference points in our jig. Now that we've got our roughing tool paths complete on both sides, we're going to switch to a quarter inch ball nose bit. This is going to allow us to do our finishing pass on both sides. We're going to start with this side first. Let's get on with it. Now that our first finishing tool path is complete, we can do the same again on the top side. We've just rotated it exactly the same as we've done in our CAM program. Referenced it using the dowel holes that we've drilled. Let's get that tool path going. We can go upstairs and show you how we did it in our CAM program. Using a spire, I'm just going to show you here how we've set up our job size and the position. So under the job setup tab, we've got the ability to change to a single sided or double sided job. So we've got that selected to find our job size, our Z0 position and our XY dating position. This is the important part we need to focus on. So this is going to be how we physically move the material once it's on our machine bed. So this is the direction we're going to flip between each side. Just press OK on that. I'm not going to go fully in depth how we've made this vector but you can use the create vectors tab just here and this will allow you to create shapes like that which you can then bring into the modeling section and create components at the depths that you specify. So let's just unlock them in the 3D view. And here you can see what our project will look like. Again, if I just show you here. This is a pocket in tool path that's gonna reference our jig when we flip it between sides. And you can see that flip between each side where that's going to reference exactly on our spoiler board. Again this is the underside, just have a look at the 3D view, close that one there. And this is what our project is going to look like once it's complete. Now that all of our 3D finishing tool paths are complete, I've left enough material just around this edge here so I can remove it with a scalpel. This saves adding any tabs, which will be a bit messier to clean up. You can do this way, but just for this example, this is what we've done. 
I'm then going to tidy up the surface finish using an orbital sander with a 240 grit and a 120 grit just to remove any rough marks or tool marks that we may have left on our project. We can then add some finish and the project will be complete. We hope you found this tutorial useful in learning how to two-sided machine on your work bee. Please give the video a like and leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and see you next time.